Well, the time is just gone 5.15am. It is Wednesday the 10th of November. Thanks for clicking on to Vogan's European Outlook. It always amazes me when you watch social media and people honing in specifically at individual model runs. Um, the reason why I bring that up is because um, in the last day or so, we've, we've went from uh, a complete and utter flip um, people jumping on the idea of a northerly blast coming down uh, over the British Isles and, um, you know, it's all fun and games when it comes to snow and cold with that, only to see the, the, next, uh, the next run uh, almost completely turn on, on its head with uh, miles south to southwesterly winds um, blowing over the UK. The um, the the models are really struggling at this moment in time with regards to the uh, complexity of the weather pattern across the hemisphere. I'm struggling to get my teeth around it, um, and um, it is uh, I've held off in terms of jumping on a, an individual model run, and I'm going to explain to you in just a second um, why. The pattern is so complex at this moment in time, and therefore, when you look, you know, beyond seven days, it's really a complete and utter guessing game. You know my stance, you know my ideas. I'm going to stick to the ideas. I may be wrong at the end of it, and I'll hold my hands up. But I've made the forecast. I believe the 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 latter half of November will see a turn to colder weather. How strong that is, how long it lasts, all open the question. I can't answer that. But I do believe that we are going to turn colder. Uh, I may have to eventually, um, you know, hold my hand up and say I was wrong. Um, I, I'm willing to do that. Um, but certainly the, the models are going to have a hard time dealing with this because we've got massive um, waves of warmer getting projected north out of the tropics we've got now lobes of, of bitterly cold arctic air now starting to gather strength heading south we're seeing the, the strengthening of the jet stream that is something that highlighted mid-month that we would start to see a more active stormier pattern over the atlantic and that is, is what's happening i want to look at north america because north america quite often can be the breeding ground to weather that we see downstream, i.e., you know, uh, two, you know, say two to five days uh, down the road. The what goes on over North America with the collisions of air masses, the the type of jet stream, the ridges, the troughs that form off um, these clashes of air masses dictate the type of skipping rope, the flick in the script, skipping rope. Think of the, the jet stream as a flick in, the jet, in, the, in that skipping rope. And um, how that uh, re reacts and responds downstream has, of course, massive impacts on our weather pattern. So there's two areas of low pressure you can see on this chart. Um, one almost due east of New York. Uh, the other um kind of um due east of what the, the northern portion of labrador and quebec and these two areas of low pressure have uh, got the uk set in its sights but i'm going to play this uh, through here folks because what we've got is we've got systems crossing over north america we've got the cold coming down from the north we've got the warm coming down from uh, up from the south you can see the development of uh, low pressure here over the uh, the northern Great Lakes here, as you can see, and as these systems kind of uh, develop and blow up, they start to uh, pull air both from the north and from the south. They start to increase the dynamics. Then you also get the development of low pressure further east. So notice here, as we skip back, what happens is we've got an area of low pressure that develops here. So we've got the system over the Great Lakes, We've got another system that develops on the east coast of North America. That then um, becomes a stronger feature and then really intensifies to the south of Greenland. Gets, um, it whips off uh, to the north-south of Greenland. We've got another feature that develops 
So this breeding ground, so to speak, on the east coast of North America because of the warmth coming up from the south and the cold coming down from the north, of course, we're gathering the cold now further north. But watch how quickly these systems blow up. They're, they're basically uh, big heat releases. You can see here the, the system uh, becoming a very deep feature over the North Atlantic. Then we've got that next system that develops here over the, the eastern, uh, off the eastern seaboard of North America. So you get the overall idea. And the reason why we're seeing this rather dynamic, rather active pattern at the moment is because of the two meter uh, temperature anomaly, or should I say the 850 millibar uh, temperature anomaly. You can see here uh, lots of warmth across the south, lots of cold now starting to gather across the north. And of course, when you get that collision, you get low pressure development. You get the tightening of the jet stream becomes faster and it becomes more um, unpredictable, if you will. We get these big uh, northward surges. We've got these big southward dips in the jet. So the amplification becomes uh, pretty wild. And um, when you get that, sometimes it, it's very difficult to pinpoint, especially when you go out in time, um, the, the type of setup. But look at how we get this big dip in the jet here. So we've got a ton of very cold Arctic air coming down into eastern North America here. That then gets uh, transferred, shifted off eastern North America out into the Atlantic. Then we just continuously see these areas of low pressure feed off this, this pattern here. So it is a dynamic situation. It is very difficult to pinpoint. And, um, you know, watch this space, folks, because I think uh, it is going to be very back and forth. I think that we are going to have a hard time pinpointing. But, um, you know, the models are going to go back. I believe the models will go back to the theme of a, a, a bitter cold northerly um, discharge of air. It might flip back towards mild once again. But it's having a hard time uh, dealing with these areas of low pressure as they cross the North Atlantic here. So let's have a quick look at the the overview once again. We'll skip right back to what's going on at the moment. Of course, we've got the feature off eastern Iberia, bringing lots of wind and rain and heavy seas through the Balearics, down the Spanish costas. But notice here, um, out over the Atlantic here, we've got uh, deep areas of low pressure. Um, spawning off that um, that uh, extreme temperature or thermal gradient over eastern North America here. And what we get is this system here in particular, well out over the Atlantic here on Thursday. But by the time it reaches uh, the UK, it brings wind and rain, possibly severe gales to the coast of the UK, west coast in particular, and around Ireland during the day on Friday. But cast your eyes out over the Atlantic here, We've got that next feature coming in because of the dynamics that I explained already over North America here. And that feature in particular actually gets shifted northwards. It gets uh, lifted up towards uh, Greenland and towards Iceland here. All the while, by the way, we've got an area of high pressure that's centered between Greenland and Svalbard. What's interesting, if we skip right back I want, I want to, to show you in particular the development. Now, this area of high pressure that will eventually spread south, this is, of course, one model run. It will chop and change. But this feature um, that eventually drops over Scandinavia and down into Eastern Europe is actually not in the chart. It's way up to the north in the Arctic here. But it's actually, once we get this feature here across the UK, then the next feature comes into the, the uh, onto the charts onto the playing field that feature then gets transferred northwards here towards uh, greenland and iceland it's once that takes that northward uh, push you notice the area of high pressure that's centered between greenland and norway that then moves inland over scandinavia and it deepens it, it becomes a stronger um, area of high pressure that's a cold high, by the way. Could see the first minus 30s in parts of northern Scandinavia with this feature. And it's, it's this transfer north of heat that then will send that cold high down over 
the eastern portion of Europe here. And that is going to be very interesting to see what takes place. So you can see here, 1046 millibars over the eastern portion of Europe here, over, I believe that would be the Ukraine. So it's going to be very interesting, actually, to see what takes place as we go forward here. Then the frontal system associated with that array of low pressure moves uh, towards an end of the UK, as you can see here. And then we get the next series of fronts, if you will, pushing into the UK. But what is going to be interesting is the area of high pressure over um, over and near the Azores. We need to lose that, folks, by the way. Looking at the longer term, remember I made mention about the warmer than normal waters it, it, around the Azores and back towards Portugal? That is a concern because I can see where the atmosphere is actually responding to that area of abnormally warm waters. And what may happen is that that um, distorts the upper atmosphere and actually, in a sense, um, kind of stops the the northward buildup of pressure in the North Atlantic and up into Greenland here, which, of course, would be crucial to bring us the, the cold trough over the UK. But it's going to be interesting to keep an eye on that. Um, if we can try and get that uh, pushed westwards and then up towards the north, then certainly that would open the door. But that cold, the reason why I mentioned about that cold area of high pressure uh, dropping down through uh, Scandinavia and Eastern Europe is that we may see that put pressure on the jet stream out over the Atlantic. And there is reason to be optimistic that we may start to see an area of high pressure pushing up uh, northwards towards Greenland uh, during the latter half of, uh, of November here. So... It's a dynamic situation. There's no doubt about that. It's going to be a complex one here as we skip through. This is, again, one model run, but watch what's taking place here towards the end of the period here. So this is Wednesday, 24th of November. Watch the area of high pressure, uh, you know, basically between the UK and, and Canada and poking its nose up towards Greenland. And there's an area of, of low pressure just to the east of Iceland Let's see if possibly we could get that area of low pressure drop south with the, the northward push of high pressure further west here. Dynamic, complex weather pattern is unfolding across the northern hemisphere and um, it is exciting. Um, whether we get the cold at the end of the month or we, whether we don't, it's certainly always interesting to just watch how the weather and how the atmosphere plays out so please hit the like button hit the subscribe button and i'll be back as always in the next couple of days with more hope you have a great wednesday Bye bye